off but you because you are an admin okay so i'm sharing my screen let's uh quickly just touch base okay so a few schools i dropped a message in the whatsapp group but a few schools have actually been provided their welcome emails so keep a lookout for that if you're one of the schools and if you're not then like i said we're working to get the data in as we get it from ministry we process and and push it through and try to get these welcome emails out asap once you have the welcome emails, of course, you'll be able to follow along with the webinars. Now, yesterday's webinar, we did cover how to configure the reports module. And the video, it's it's quite weird. The video that we did, um, the Zoom recording, for some reason, it's, if, I don't know how many of you may have used CDs. Uh, I'm hoping everybody's old enough. But um, if you ever use a CD, then, you remember CD would skip. It's kind of like that. The video is like choppy choppy. Yeah. So we're going to have to re-record that session. I'll do so as early as possible and we'll re-record whatever was covered there and then we'll share it in the chat. So if you're looking for the webinar from yesterday, um, which is Monday, September 18th, then just keep an eye out. We'll get you a new video for that shortly. All right. Just a quick reminder to everybody. If you are using the system, we've shared this link for our tracker um, where each school kind of has the steps broken down. In fact, what we're covering in the webinars today, they're not even anymore, like they're outside of the steps provided here, right? These are next step items that we're getting to in our webinars, but anything that's necessary to get you guys up and running for taking attendance, which is the first major thing we want to do. We want to ensure the teachers are logging in, taking their daily attendance. That's uh, defined here, sort of broken down into steps. Please take a second, log in um, to the checklist. The link was shared on WhatsApp. I think I just reshared it as well. But get, get on there and just check off wherever you're at. That will help us to understand where in the process people are at and if there are any blockers for things we might be able to unblock it if there are ways that we can you know ensure that this happens as smoothly and quickly as possible it will allow us to do that so just pointing that out um everybody please 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 take a second go to the checklist the idea is that once you know you've checked off the main items really it's just as you get to the next step you're coming through and you're checking it right and the first major milestone for us is to actually get to about item M, which is basically if you've done the items in the column G to, well, not even G to, well, let's say A to L, then pretty much that means your school is ready to take attendance. The next steps after that is just to ensure that the teachers are actually taking attendance and we can, you know, help push them along. We want to get there. We want the whole country to be taking attendance through the system. I think a question was raised yesterday about attendance. Um, And yeah, if you're taking attendance in smart term, you have all of that captured, that's it. You don't have to do additional like attendance registers or anything to, you know, um, push to the ministry. Pre pretty much the ministry will be able to generate whatever attendance reports they need, as long as the attendance is in smart term. So really looking forward to getting everybody up to speed. Um, we're there to answer the questions as they come up. We're pushing along the schools to get you guys onboarded if your data wasn't in already. And yeah, let's let's work together to get attendance in. All right. So in today's session, what we're actually covering is the gradebook module. So just once again, a quick little caveat or side note from uh, yesterday. We... Up until like the end of last week, we covered everything necessary to get schools attendance ready. Now that was, it was sort of a, a, a predefined path. Every school has to follow the path to get up to that point for attendance generation. Meaning you would all have to log into the system, right? Get that first login out the way. Um, look at the data that was imported, whether it was last term's data, that we'll put in the summer term 2023, or if it was your current data, you still have to take a quick glance at it, make sure the data 
looks about right. And then, you know, if it's last term data, use the promotions tool to get it into Christmas term 2023. And if it's current data, then just copy it all over as is, right? The next thing you would have to do is to change the teachers, both in the classrooms and in the subjects. And then finally, the next, the last thing to do is to get the students into the subjects, which may involve actually creating a student, right? If one wasn't created, but in most cases, it would just mean assigning a student to the classroom and the subject. You did the promotions and the promotions tool will get them into the classrooms. They should also pull into the subjects. Um, so it's really just getting the stragglers in, right? So that's the format that everybody had to follow. And the webinars we did last week covered that. That got you to the point of taking attendance. What we covered yesterday is how to configure reports. And this is where there's no defined script anymore as to a specific configuration because each school is unique. Each school has their own ways to operate. And so the report configuration, we kind of went through what each configuration can capture. And I talked about a couple of use cases here and there. Um, but the reality is, is each school will be configuring their reports as per their requirements as a school. So just a quick example for those who are catching up and obviously weren't able to see yesterday's event yet. Um, you may be a school, for example, that at your school you do uh, term grade and exam grade. Uh, that seems to be pretty standard across most of the schools, but the wait for the term grade at your school may be uh, 30, 17, the first term, right? So you can configure things like that in the system. You have the flexibility. You may want to do a certain breakdown of how your reports are configured. You may be the kind of school that wants extracurricular activities or badges like a prefect badge to show and report. You may want attendance. Well, most schools will want attendance, but you may want behavioral pieces to show like a merit or demerit or something like that. So all those things are configured in the report configurations, right? So if you missed the session yesterday in person, um, like I said, we'll do a follow-up video and you'll follow along with that. Today's session assumes that the school has been set up. The reports have been configured and you have, you know, you did everything to get to the attendance point. Then you also configured a couple things um, with the report configuration in mind. And so you're moving forward from there. We're moving towards generating a report at the end of the term. That being said, uh, it's not absolutely necessary for like the fine tuned details of the report to be configured for you to be able to use a grade book. They're related heavily, but they're not exactly dependent on each other. What you capture in the grade book will be reflected on the report. The only subtle difference, and I will quickly share my, well, I'm quickly share the module configurations piece here, is depending on how you go about creating assignments, um, as I mentioned, in the first term versus the second term versus the third term, there's a slight difference in terms of what's being captured. In the first term, for example, if you are a early childhood school, then you would want assessments to be on and the report for the child would actually just be an assessment based report at the end of the term, right? What we call assessments is really qualitative assessments. I know assessments is generally a blanket term used for any kind of assessment done to the student. But in our case, we have assignments which count towards quantitative grades, right? So you may have an assignment um, in the coursework com component, you may have a test, you may have an exam, and then we'll have a qualitative component, which is the assessments where you're, for example, picking things off a, a, a list of some kind, some kind of scale, right? Uh, an example I could give is a lot of schools, primary schools in, in Jamaica, they have something called reading level. And regardless of what level you're at, so primary or secondary school, they may capture a reading level for you, right? And the reading level scales from like, Prima, pre prima, kindergarten, grade one, grade two, all the way up to, uh, you know, grade 10, which is fourth form, 11, 12, right? And so at the end of the term, when you're getting to the reports uh, period, you would go to the report and you kind of just select from a drop down and that captures, right? So there's that piece that you want on 
and it's something that you may capture for the reports and that's a little different from you know your traditional grade books which is what we're going to focus on today right the next thing you want to keep an eye on is for your subjects what you actually want to capture so as i mentioned we're here the gear icon it gets you to the module configurations here at the top we have this tab we can scroll down and i believe that across all schools the general format will be to enable assignments and to enable exams right so you'll have a term grade which is your assignments right your coursework basically and then you have a final grade which is for exams we do have something for tests there and that's only if you want to keep a distinction for midterm tests and and things like that at which point for the end of term report you would have a percentage breakdown across each section but based on our experience with the the pilot schools, the pilot program that we did, which kind of covered primary and secondary a bit. Um, and based on our conversations with the ministry, for most schools in St. Vincent, the configuration that you need is to have assignments enabled and exams enabled. And what assignments and exam enabled means is that you'll have sort of two components to the grade. And when you get to the end of the term, you'll capture that that term grade component, so as to speak, which is the assignments, and then the final exam gets its own special part, and you can show both on the report. All right, there are a couple other module configurations here, but we don't need to deep dive too deep into that because we're gonna cover things as we go along, and we don't want to make things too complicated too quickly. Smart term is a very very expensive system; it covers a lot, and the key thing that we we'll want to keep in mind is that as we go along more and more things will become evident and we're going to keep doing little refreshers and we're going to do little information sessions here and there that will add functionality for example behavioral aspects we, we may do a session for that after this set of webinars so that you can start capturing your behavioral info in the system all right so just wanted to point that out real quick and let's go over to our home dashboard and then one thing i wanted to point out is that we have subjects and in the subjects we have um a, you know our grade books module is there as well and the grade books module is what we're focusing on today but i wanted to give a quick little insight before we dive too too deep into the grade book model as how it ties in with the subject module right so of course in smart term you have your classrooms and you have your subjects now, each subject is its own standalone piece, right? So depending on who you are as a teacher, um, of course, these sessions right now, they're being held live for our ambassadors, but this video could be shared with teachers as well after the fact, or maybe we'll edit it to include the relevant pieces for the teachers and then have that. But if you're a teacher, then you obviously have a group of su subjects assigned to you and each subject you'll have, you know, a grade book page for it, right? So depending on how you function right now, most likely at your school, you have some kind of physical grade book. And that physical grade book, you know, you have the pages in there and then you have your subject. And then for the subject, you have all your assignments, right? Whatever they are. And then if you have any exam grades, you have that too, right? And it kind of just reads, or how I've seen it, at least for schools over on the Jamaica side is that, vertically like the first column is the name of the students and then each subsequent column may be like an assignment so you'll have like homework one homework two homework three homework four going out across on the top row and then the first column is like the student names and so you you kind of have this grid view where you can see the grades and that's exactly how it's you know we built it over in smart terms so it kind of reads the same All right so let me go to a subject where i did create an assignment i think maybe english right so you have your name, you have the name of the student. We do show the overall grade first, but then you have the assignments that kind of read across as you create more and more assignments that'll come in. Now, the reason I wanted to point out from the subjects module first is that there are a couple of things that can be configured for each subject. So your grade book is, is quite customizable, right? So let's go into English because that's the one I've created some assignments for. And I have the gear icon here that I can click and I can click edit, right? When I see that, the first tab of, of course shows me the teacher and everything, the, the general stuff when we're setting up the subject. 
but there's a second tab here for assignment and assessment options, right? And so we have something in our system called assignment categories. Now, for the very basic user, for the user that just wants to capture a grade in smart term, you may not care about assignment categories, right? What you do is you just have this, by default, the system just creates it so that there's this coursework category that weighs 100% across the board, right? And it's as simple as that. You create an assignment, you add in the grade, and all the assignments are more or less, they're weighed equally, right? So across the board, you have, let's say in the term, you have 10 assignments and it's a mix of homework and classwork, but they all weigh equally to the overall term grade. Then this coursework 100 is sufficient. It allows me to just create the assignments as I go and I'll just put them all in the coursework category and, you know, save them, which I'll show you in the grade book in a moment, right? But you do have a little bit more in smart term. You can actually come in and you can create different categorical profiles on an individual subject basis. You can create categories that are relevant for your school, right? So for example, maybe in my term grade, I give homework and I give classwork. But my homework only really values 30% of the overall term grade. I can come in here and I can set my homework to 30 and I can create another profile and I can call it classwork. And I can set that to 70, right? So I've set my weights here in my assignment category. Now, what this will do is this will allow my teachers, you know, as I go along and create assignments, I can just put an assignment in a bucket. All my homework assignments can be in the homework bucket. And when the grades are tallied up for the homework, well, the overall term grade will only get, you know, it will only contribute to 30% of it. The overall term grade, the classwork will contribute to 70% of it. Now, mind you, the final exam has its own separate place, right? It has a different component. I don't have to worry about the final exam. That's just something we administer at the end of the term. It has its own grade. And on the report, I show a term grade and an exam grade, right? And so I can set up my categories here. Now we have some other functionalities as well. We have these things called strands, subject strands. An example of a subject strand would be, let's say I, I'm a math guy, so I'm gonna use math as an example. Let's say I teach a math class, right? My, my subject is just math. But within math, I actually teach my students geometry, I teach them algebra, and I teach them arithmetic. Well, with the system, once again, this is optional. You don't have to do it. By default, the strands are off, right? But with the system, you do now have the ability to enable these strands. And then you can create the strands and you can separate the different components of that subject, right? So within my math course, even though on the report card at the end of the term, there's only just one math grade, you do have the option to show the strands on the report, right? But let's say they only show one math grade. But for the purposes of my teaching, I still want to make the distinction in the strands. So I actually create, oh, I'm in language, right? So let's see, subject, eerie powers. I'm just gonna pull something from the internet, right? So let's say I have like creative writing and poetry as two set strands that I teach at my school, right? So I do creative writing. And I say that's worth 50%. And I have to make it add up to 100. So I do poetry. And that's 50%, right? So I have my strands there, right? I could have made three. I could have made four. I could have made as many as I need. Um, and I go ahead and say that. Now I actually have two ways for my single subject to be broken down. I have my subject and the term grade for the subject. It breaks down in terms of the type of assignments. So is it homework? Is it classwork? Is it project? right? Group activity and each of those have a percentage weight and they can break down in terms of the strand that I want to capture, right? And on the end of term report, if I wanted to, all I'm still showing is one English language grade, right? I'm not showing any breakdown, but I do have the ability to show a breakdown across strands on a report, um, obviously showing a breakdown on the assessment types that, that can get kind of complex, right? So we show the strands and then of course, maybe we want to capture that on report, maybe we don't. But those are just some quick configurations that can be done in a subject. Once again, both are optional. You don't have to do it. 
If you want to keep it simple, you have the coursework 100%. I will illustrate both once we look at the actual um, gradebook module. But this is how a subject can be configured. And once a subject, oh, I see a suggestion of oral presentations. Thank you. Let's say, okay, we want to add oral presentations too. But let's say creative writing is 50 and poetry is 40 and oral presentations is 10, right? So I have my strands there. And go ahead. Um, although it said it was saving, just be safe. I'm still going to go ahead and save. And that's created these strands for my English language subject, right? Um, that's just a little disclaimer. That's how the subjects tie into what we do in the grade books. Now, assuming that is done, and of course that has to be done across the subjects, but you know, if there were a situation where a school has the same components, let's say the same kind of assignment category breakdown across all subjects in the school, then, you know, let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. We could probably add in a way to put it in on mass, like it bulk change it across the whole school. But as it stands, really, it's meant to be so that you can customize your subject to actually match how you conduct your subject as a teacher, really. Okay. But we went ahead and we kind of set up how English language looks. We go to the grade book. Now, what I'll see, actually, let me let me do it from the subject. But here we go to the grade book. We see that the grade book has a breakdown of the subject, right? We can quickly add an assignment as well. We can create assignments. I may have locked this subject. We see our assignment categories here at the bottom. So you see the 30 and the 70%. So, you know, those things can be adjusted. But let's go quickly back to our English subject. And so, you know, I have everything configured. Next up, I have this, this classwork tab. Now, the reason I wanted to draw your attention to this, and I think we have a session for advanced assignment. Let me just double check. I'm checking my webinar plan. Um, yeah, we, tomorrow's session, we're going to dive deeper into the creation of the assignments and stuff. So we'll save that for tomorrow. But just to quickly highlight, um, you know, we have this classwork tab and you can create assignments in the system and there's kind of levels to it there's you know once again my simplest use case where i'm just using the system i just want to capture my grades and generate a report at the end of the term then in that case i'll just create an assignment sort of as a, a placeholder and you know just give it a name whatever its name it actually is like is it homework one just call it homework one and follow a few basic prompts the number of points and stuff we'll show that tomorrow but click save assignments created i can do it in my you know i can flesh it out and add the grades as i need and i can do it from within the subject itself so you can actually go into a subject your classwork and you'll see all the upcoming tasks you know or sorry the upcoming assignments you can see all previous assignments right you can see whatever was due there's all the graded components right there's there's a lot that can be done there but you can also um you can also do it from the grade book, right? So that's how, you know, assignment creation, once everything's configured for the subject, you can do it from within the subject itself and adjust your grades and all that, right? However, for those who want to do it a little quickly, and of course, maybe in this first term for a lot of our schools, you may find yourself just needing to quickly create the assignment, capture the grade, move on. And in that case, what we would do is we would use the grade book. So navigate down to gradebook here, click on it. Now, as a teacher, you would only see the subjects you teach in the gradebook, right? My system here, I'm logged in as a, a system admin that kind of runs everything. But the reality of it is teachers will be the ones using the gradebook and they will only see the subjects that they teach, right? Um, so they would have this drop down here. They can click their subject and they can kind of see what's going on for it, right? Now, I have... Let me just double check. I, I have submitted my grades for this subject. We did this yesterday. So let me just unsubmit that. And that's why it was preventing me from creating things, right? We we're talking about reports yesterday and reports. We had the submit grade feature, which I illustrated to everybody. Um, But let's, you know, go ahead and open this back up. So I come to my grade book, we go to the grade book. We see coursework tab here. And I see my subject and I see a couple buttons there, right? I can click edit grades to quickly adjust a grade. 
Now, if this the assignment that was created, and we'll cover this tomorrow, is one of the more advanced assignments. So you're a user who wants to really get some value from smart terms. So you create some auto graded assignments that are multiple choice or short answer and the system auto grading it. Well, in that case, it will just say that it's an auto graded assignment. And to do any kind of changes or anything like that, if just to kind of give a brief glimpse of what an auto graded assignment can look like, you can have different components and you have questions that are broken down into short answer or multiple choice or, you know, free form essay type questions where you actually go in and manually add a grade. Well, you have to actually go into the assignment to do that for the more advanced assignments. But if it's a simple assignment, so the use case that I gave a while ago where you just create the name of the assignment and you just, um, you know, keep it to coursework 100%, right? No breakdowns or anything like that. You just give it a name, homework one, say it's out of 10 points and save it. Well, you come in here, you click edit grades, you can adjust the grade, right? And you can do that pretty much freely and it will adjust as is needed. Now you'll actually see an overall grade there, but when we created these assignments, we'll also see the ability to kind of adjust the um categories and the strands, right? So here in this case, this homework is a homework strand and I want to put it against creative writing. I'm gonna put that and I'm going down and click save. And I'll, I'll see my grade start to kind of populate here, right? For this assignment, it's an advanced assignment. So I still have to go into the settings. I still have to pick a strand. So let's say the strand is, I can't remember what I picked for the previous one. Let me go down and hit save. If I have a little bleeding there, I'll make a note of that so that it's displayed properly. Um, And then we'll go over and we see our grade kind of start to populate. But of course, it's an auto-graded assignment and no student of mine went in and did it. I can see what type of assignment category it is. I can see what strand it's in as well, right? So I'll start to see my grade build as we go along. Now, teachers can also quickly create an assignment if they wanted to from this gradebook page. So tomorrow we're gonna talk about how to create assignments from the, you know, like more detailed side with like multiple choice and all of that. But I'm also gonna quickly show that, okay, in a grade book, if I needed to quickly create an assignment just to capture it, all I need to do um, is click add assignment. I choose if it's for all students or select students if I wanted to take a differentiated approach to my, you know, learning differentiated learning so that my students have different assignments. But generally speaking, all assignments will be for all students. So I choose all students. I choose what type of work, right? And I have two options here. We're going to rename these a little bit to be just a little clearer soon. So keep an eye out for that. But auto-graded, more advanced assignments are called MCQ here. They're auto-graded. That's the part you need to focus on. Those are assignments that you actually create in Smart Term. We'll show that tomorrow, but you create it and you flesh out the functionality. And then those assignments get assigned to the students and the students can log into Smart Term and they can do the assignment and they answer the questions and it's auto-graded, right? And then we have what we call more simpler assignments. And we, put, we called it essay questions here. I don't like that name so we're going to change the name like i said but those are more just um assignments that are not done using the smart term advanced assignment so it could be anything right it could be an assignment that you create in smart term and you maybe upload a pdf of questions and then the students log into smart term and they download the pdf but it could even be an assignment that has nothing to do with smart term it could be an assignment that let's say you're at school you wrote some questions on the chalkboard. The students wrote their answers on a piece of paper. They submit the piece of paper to you. You grade the piece of paper. You give it back to the students, right? Only thing you care about is the grade. You want to get that in so that it helps you with your report generation. But, um, you know, any kind of assignment like that, anything that's not auto-graded, you choose the second option, right? Once you do that, you have the option to choose the title of the assignment. So let's say this is called Classwork one right my classwork is out of 20 points when it's in draft only the teacher sees it it's not available to the students once you publish it then the students can actually see it and interact with it assuming that um you know the due date hasn't passed right so let's say published for now you choose the category so i said homework that's the strand I or the assignment category i created and the strand we did these two so let's say it's poetry Right. You set a few other things, but 
like I said, if you're just doing a placeholder assignment, one that you just want to capture the grade, this is the only information that you need to fill out. You can scroll down to the bottom and you can click save and that will create the assignment, right? Everything else you don't have to worry about right now, but we'll cover the more advanced things that you can do with the assignments tomorrow, right? And you'll see that that classwork one has been created. You get to edit grades, you can add in the grade for it. So let's say out of 20, this student got 17. Right, and click save, and you'll see the overall grade starts updating. Right, now I have different strands and stuff here, so my overall grade don't look as nice as I want it to look. But I would have to create a bunch of different assignments. I'd have to probably create classwork for poetry and homework for poetry, and classwork and homework for creative writing, and classwork and homework for oral presentations. And that's how I'd kind of get my breakdown. Right, so let's say we did all of that and, and everything is in then my grade book will show me my overall grade, which was configured using the reports configuration that we used yesterday, where we define the weights that each component has. So how much does the term grade have, right? Um, towards the final exam. Here, what you're seeing is a grade as a percentage of the term grade, overall term grade, pretty much, right? Um, so this could be 100, and then they still have a separate grade for their final exams, just to be clear, right? There's a tab here for exams. So you can go in and you can add the exams as well, right? And then there's a tab here for final grades. And assuming you've configured everything for the report, you would see the uh, final grades there, right? Let's recalculate. So we have that 58 that we just got when we added in some grades and we see that the student's final grade is about 73, but I got 18 in the exam, right? Um, that kind of covers everything that we want in the grade book, but, I use a more advanced case because I created these strands and these assignment categories. Let's say you're keeping things very simple. We'll have the math class, right? And the math has a coursework grade, so a term grade, basically, and an exam grade, right? I come in here and I want to add in a homework assignment. I just come to my math class, I click add assignment. I choose all students. I choose as a question. And I say this is homework one. It's out of 10, it's published, and my category is just, there's just one category, there's no strands or different assignment categories. I'll go ahead and I click save, and the assignment gets created. It's taking me into the assignment, so I'm gonna talk to the team about adding a back button here, Um, but we'll go back to the grade book, right? And my mathematics is there, and my homework one that I just created is there. I click edit grades, I said the student got 10 out of 10, I'm feeling nice. The student's grade is there, right? So their overall grade for coursework for math, 100%. Let's say they did, you know, not just one assignment, but they did three. I can go in and I can just quickly create the other assignments, right? I said questions, type of assignment, classwork one. I said it's also out of, no, let's say classwork one's out of 100. Published, choose a coursework, go down, hit create. I mean that now, mind you, when I go into the assignment, there's actually a grade stop in the assignment as well. So I can go into the assignment and I can give grades here as well. I'm gonna do that for one student just so you guys can see it, but I don't have to do it from within the assignment. I can just do everything from my grade book. I can come to my grade book. You'll see that this student, I had just added in 80, so that grade is there, but I can just actually come into my grade book and it reads like the actual grade book where you're coming in and you're adding in the, Assignments, let's say the student got a 78 for the classwork. And let's say the student got nine out of 10 for their assignment. And I can see that their overall grade, once I do all of this, let me just reset the grades real quick. Yeah, their overall grade here is, oh, I didn't save these, let me save this. So 93, nine out of 10 is what I said. Come up here, I click save and their overall grade is just here, right? I had to remember to click save, and then that updated, and I have my grades here. So you can keep it as simple as you want to. You want to just give the assignment a name, and then just, you know, one single category, just add in the grades. It's as easy as that, right? You create assignments, you just fill out a few things, and you can run across, and you can have all your assignments in the system. And then when it comes to report time, now you don't have to worry about calculating a coursework grade, right? 
because your coursework grade is being calculated for you. It's being calculated based on, let me just confirm something here. Yeah, there we go. It updated because I changed some things, right? But I get to the end of the term, my coursework grade is being calculated for me. I don't need to worry about it. Gone are the days where you had to sit down with a grade book and calculate things by hand or plug it into some kind of Excel formula sheet that you created. And then even if you created that formula sheet in Excel, right? When you get to the end of the term, you might decide to drop an assignment. And previously, when you drop that assignment, you say, oh boy, I have to come back into the system and I have to go and update my equations or whatever I sit in Excel and recalculate my grades. Or I have to do it by hand, which is even more painful. Let's say you did 30 assignments and you now have to average 29 assignments because you decide to drop one, right? Those days are gone because you just come into here and you have the option to, of course, delete the assignment but you don't even have to do that. Let's say um, we were in the assignment, let's go into it and we can go into the settings. We can just say, hey, we don't want to delete the assignment. We just don't want to include it in the report card, right? We'll go ahead and we'll click save. This is what classwork one for math. Go back to my grade book. And then I have just homework one for math, right? Classwork one not showing up in my grade book anymore because it's not counting towards the final grade. It's still there in the subject, right? If I go into the subject here, um, mathematics, right? And I go to the classwork tab and I go to the assignment. Classwork one is still there, right? It's just not being counted towards the report. And now I don't have to worry about doing any kind of recalculations or anything like that because I just come here, if I need to resync my grades, it actually automatically did it a while ago, but if I needed to resync my grades, there's a button there to resync my grades. And I can go over to my final grades and I say, okay, that's my final grade for course arc and, and term grade. Now, let's say it's a situation where you have to enter the ex exam grade, the overall exam grade. Well, you're still in your grade book. You can click the edit grades button and you have the exam grade here. And so let's say the exam grade for the student was 91 and the exam grade for the student was 78. I'll go and we'll click save and now we'll have the overall grade, you know, based on the weights, whatever. I set some weights for this subject yesterday that I had done um, when we were going over the reports configuration stuff, right? And so based on those weights, my final grade is calculated. It's probably something like 3070 or something, right? This looks like a 3070 thing because the 100 is contributing less and the 91 is contributing more. That's why the grade's closer to 91 than 100, right? Um, so I'm guessing it's something like 30, 70 or 40, 60 or something. But that's defined and it's in. Likewise, we talked yesterday about doing comments. If I needed to enter a comment, I can do it from my grade book. And this is the overall comment, of course, for the student. We'll cover the different types of comments and creating them. So I wanted to add a comment in for this subject. I click add and it's there. I can do that all from my grade book and I have my assignments there. Now, the report module is very similar. The report module that we discussed yesterday, but just to rehash, it covers the grade components of the grade book. So I have my coursework there and I have my final grades tab there. If I wanted to, I could adjust, I could make the same changes from this tab as well, right? So whether I did it in grade book, grade book just kind of com compartmentalizes it. Or I want to get, you know, I'm at the end of the term and I'm just looking over my reports and I need to update some grades or something. I can do it from the coursework tab. I come here, I see my assignment category here below, but you know, we set those up in the subjects already. So if I went over to English, I see my assignment categories for English there. I see all my strands and stuff, right? I see my final grades. I can make some changes there if I need to. Um, let's go over to mathematics. I see my grades there. So as a teacher, I can just cycle through each subject, right? Any subject I teach, I can just cycle through them. And I can just adjust, adjust, excuse me, adjust my grades. Same thing for final grades. But then, of course, the reports module has a couple other things as well. Attendance. Now, if you're taking attendance in the system from day one, which I know our schools are close to, um, then when you get to this report period, you have nothing to do for attendance. It will just pull from the system. Present, late, absent, all of that will just tally up towards the report card, right? The assessments. We talked about these qualitative assessments yesterday. We created one. So just so you can see what it looks like. Um, if you're uh, an early childhood or preschool level or even kindergarten level school um, that, that offers preschool or kindergarten, 
chances are they don't have a report with coursework or final grades. Their report is probably just a series of assessments. And so the teacher would just come to the report card module rather than the grade book. And they'd come to the student's assessment tab and they would just pick from a drop down, right? Pick what they need to do, click save, move on, right? And once again, it all pulls into that report summary. So when you get to the end of the term and you want to generate the report, you get a quick report and you can see everything that you add and everything that's broken down. And I have it, I turned it on to show the um strands. So here I'm seeing English and I'm seeing the strands underneath. But if the strands are off, you'll just see a single English grade, right? So that's really just it. It's saying undefined because of course we didn't actually capture any grades for it. But that's really it. Um, that covers everything for the gradebook module. I will look quickly at the chat to see if I can answer the question. Um, okay. So good afternoon. Oh, we talked about the activity logs already. We talked, oh, the oral presentations is there. Okay, so the overall grade is not percent as yet. Um, could you elaborate? But the overall grade would be displayed as a percentage, right? Um, what I was showing was individual assignments and then the overall grade would be what you would consider the term grade on your report. Now, I don't know how your school operates. So I'm making the assumption that on your report cards for Christmas term, you have a term grade and an exam grade. That's my assumption. Well, what the grade book is handling really is what that term grade looks like. And then you have a place for the exams as well in the grade book. And then that would be the exam grade. And then you can calculate a final grade. That's a composition or, you know, a composite of the term grade and the exam grade. Right. And that would be the final grade. So, yes, it's up to you. We talked about this with our reports configuration stuff yesterday. I know a lot of people weren't there. So just to rehash it's up to you how it's configured for the reports. It depends on the schools. Some schools may only want to show the term grade and exam grade. Some people want to show term grade, exam grade, and a final grade, right? So it's whatever you want to show. In fact, you could have a term grade and not even show that on the report. You could only show an exam grade if you wanted. And those are all configurable things that are, that, that are set in the report configuration. Because I want to make a quick distinction here. There's things that you can do in the system and capture, and then there's things that you report for the report card that goes to the parents, right? And those don't necessarily need to be the same. You can capture more information that you use for analytics purposes and to give better guidance to the students, and you don't necessarily need that to be on their end of term report, but you still want to be able to understand, maybe as a teacher or even as the admin or principal at the school, to understand the overall um composition and breakdown of things, you may want to get more granular information. So what the system is doing is it's empowering you to do that. It's not forcing you to do it. You can simplify things and, and let it be very, very like simple, right? So just one, no detailed assignment types, no detailed like breakdown of strands, nothing like that. You just capture very simple info. But the more simple you make it in terms of what you're capturing, the less insight you have. Okay, uh, I don't know if I'm asking the right question, but on the report card, we show the position of students in form one to three for both terms mark and exam mark. Does the system allow it? We show the positions of students in form one to three. Are you saying that you rank students in terms of term mark and then rank them in terms of exam mark? Is that what you're asking? So we do rankings, but the rankings would be across final grade, meaning term plus exam, this is their final grade, and they rank across, you know, that final grade. So we do ranking at that level. If there's something where you want it to be more and more granular for ranking, um, there is, depending on whether you need to show it on the report or not, there is a way to do it in analytics where you can get some breakdowns for your students. But if it's something you want to show on your report, then we would probably have to discuss that because that sounds custom. Not a, I, I don't know many schools that do something like that. So it would be something that I guess let's discuss in our chat and then we may even have to uh, uh, set up a session and get more information from you. Uh, how do you make the drop down list of comments again? So I'm assuming this question is about the end of term comments that go on the reports. Well, once you've configured everything, there's a bit of configuration that may go into place. So you have report configurations, 
you have a comments tab there. You choose to capture comments. You allow comments to be free form or not free form, meaning a teacher can type anything. Or do you want to make it so that a teacher only selects from a drop down? If you want them to only select from a drop down, you keep it on. If you want to give them the ability to, you know, maybe select from a drop down, but also add their own more personal insights, then you keep it off. You choose whether the comments are for the subject, are they for the overall class, right? Do you want a grade coordinator, a principal's comment? You choose all those things. And then obviously you choose to use the drop downs. That's how you activate the feature, so as to speak. Now, once it's activated or initialized, right? You then go to the reports module here. We go to reports, we go to report, oh, sorry. We go to reports, we go to comments, and then you have the ability to create that comment list. So yesterday I gave an example. Most likely when you create a comment, most of them, the code would be general. So these are just general comments for the subject teacher, right? So these are subject-based comments as opposed to class comments or a grade coordinator comments, right? So the subject teacher has general comments and they can say something like satisfactory performance, right? And I saved that. However, I pointed out yesterday that with our system, you can actually create more specialized comments. So if I wanted to create comments that are specific to a subject, I can do that. In the case yesterday, I used Spanish and I said, okay, you know, demonstrates understanding of the JSON. So here, like I would have just typed Spanish and then, you know, it's still subject because that's specific to Spanish. Um, and then, you know, whatever I wrote, I would write that and I would hit save and it would make it. I can't think of another Spanish comment right now. So let's just assume I did this for the first time. And then what would happen is when you're in report cards in the final grade, right? If you wanted to add a comment, once you click edit, there's a pencil icon beside the name and you see the category. So here I see Spanish as a category you can click on general. And I see my general comments. I just added this one, satisfactory performance. I can click it, right? If I wanted to allow free form, then that's there. If I had disallowed it, then the teacher would not be able to actually type anything here. They would only be able to select from these um, clickable ones, right? And of course, if I don't want comments at all, I, do, I can just make it so that comments are not done. So you have the options and the flexibility to approach it however you want. Remember to click save and that will save it. Um, you know, let's say I'm in my Spanish class and I wanted to give all my students that one Spanish comment because I didn't make another one, right? So I just come here, I have my drop down, it's on Spanish already. I click the the um comment and then it went in and I click add and then my student gets that comment, I click save. And then of course, once I get to reporting, because I've added in my comments and everything, once I generate a report, you'll see the comments there right so you see it against my niche you see it against math you see the teacher there and everything oh there are more questions and in forum five we show how many subjects the students passed out of the total eight right so if you saw the report i mean there's a key for the report here so you could demonstrate who passed or who failed like we're here we have like zero to 59 as a failed so the failed students would you know you see the grades and you see who failed and who passed based on that but um yeah depending on on what you need oh so i see that you're responding to me i guess my chat wasn't scrolling down automatically but yeah if you're doing a ranking in terms of each component that i can tell you that's that's not something I've heard another school do. So if it's something that you do, and I don't know, are other schools doing it in St. Vincent, then let's use the chat because how we tackle something like this is first we try to understand how many schools in the country are doing it. Is it something that is relatively standard? Not everybody has to do it, but if a lot of people are, then you know we could maybe talk to the minister and say, hey, this is something we need to build in. And if not, then... um. You know, if it's something very specific and custom to your school, then we'd have to have a conversation with you guys to figure out, you know, how we can get you that feature at some point. So let's, uh, you know, let's let's put it out there. Let's see 
Um, I will make a note, of course, and I'll talk to my team about it. But it's definitely a, probably the first time I'm hearing of ranking on that level of granularity. The rankings that we normally have are um, overall grade ranking, pretty much. So I'm first in class because my average is high. I hope that helps. I'm trying to think like, how do you even fit that on a report? I mean, it's a lot of information on a report. Now, that all being said, right, one of the features we're looking to eventually roll out, I'm giving you guys a little sneak peek here, really, is we're looking at doing more advanced reporting functionality. So giving more insights. And so the ranking bit is something that could come into the analytics, right? So when a parent sees a report, they can also get a more granular, like not on a physical piece of paper. If they printed the report, they just get printed report. But if they're on smart term, then they can get more insights there, right? And see those rankings and everything. Okay, so we're at time pretty much. Um, I see some messages coming in. Nope, we're good on the messages. I see another school also said they do the rankings. So yeah, let's let's maybe drop it in the chat and then we can figure it out. Uh, we would probably need some ministry input on this as well. But, you know, if nothing else, then I'm going to remind everybody again, please run through the tracker and update where you're at so that we know where you're at, so that we know how well this is progressing and we can work with the ministry to set proper, you know, expectations um, and also figure out if we need to get, you know, if there are any blockers or anything that we need to unblock, right? So take a glance at that. Um, and if not, then, you know, I look forward to hearing more in the chat and we can, I, I think there are no more questions. So I think we can call it a day now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and I'll stop the recording. Um, and yeah, everybody have a good day. Jamie, are you still there? I think you're... You are recording? Yeah, I'll stop the recording. It's fine. Oh, so yeah, you can you can stop on your side.